In this lesson, we are going to examine the oxidation and reduction sequence for some organic molecules. When we look at redox reactions in organic molecules, we start to see some patterns emerge. Going from an alkane all the way up to carbon dioxide contains several oxidation reactions. Conversely, going from CO2 to an alkane are reduction reactions. Note that oxidation and reduction are opposite processes from one another. For example, going from a primary alcohol to an aldehyde is an oxidation. Going from an aldehyde to a primary alcohol is a reduction. Because of these trends, we are then able to predict products of some reactions. Let's look at an example of what happens to the oxidation of some alcohols. Remember that we can have primary, secondary, and tertiary alcohols based on the number of R groups that are attached to the hydroxyl carbon. A primary alcohol can be oxidized by increasing the number of bonds to oxygen. When this happens, we form an aldehyde. An aldehyde can be further oxidized to form a carboxylic acid. The reverse process is also true. A carboxylic acid can be reduced to an aldehyde, which can be reduced to a primary alcohol. A secondary alcohol can also be oxidized to form a carbonyl or C double bond O. When it's oxidized, we see a ketone. Notice the position of the OH and the double bond O groups are the same along the carbon chain. The thing that's changed is the number of bonds to oxygen. So a secondary alcohol can be oxidized to a ketone, and a ketone can be reduced to a secondary alcohol. A ketone, however, cannot be oxidized further. If we try to add an additional oxygen to the same carbon where the double bond O is attached, we would end up with five bonds. Remember that carbon can only form four bonds, so a ketone cannot be further oxidized. In a tertiary alcohol, the hydroxyl carbon already has three other bonds to carbon. Therefore, we cannot increase the number of bonds to oxygen to form a double bond O because this would result in that central atom containing five bonds. Therefore, tertiary alcohols cannot be oxidized and molecules cannot be reduced to form a tertiary alcohol. Let's look at some examples. What is the product of the oxidation of pentanol with a limited amount of the oxidizing agent? When we have a limited amount of the oxidizing agent, we will only see a partial oxidation of the alcohol. Because this is a primary alcohol, it can be oxidized to form an aldehyde. And this is what will happen in the presence of a limited amount of the oxidizing agent. Remember that an aldehyde can be further oxidized to form a carboxylic acid. In the presence of excess oxidizing agent, the primary alcohol will be oxidized first to an aldehyde, and then to a carboxylic acid. What results from the reduction of propanone? When a ketone is reduced, it is reduced to a secondary alcohol. So the answer to this is A. Notice that B has too many bonds to the central carbon atom. C is the result of an oxidation of an aldehyde and D shows a primary alcohol, which would result from the reduction of an aldehyde, not a ketone. What results from the oxidation of the molecule shown? In this case, we have a tertiary alcohol, which cannot be further oxidized. So therefore, the answer is E, none of the above. The hydroxyl carbon already has four bonds, so additional bonds to oxygen cannot be added. 